All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. And again, what we're doing is we're just continuing through those objectives that help us answer our essential question. And now we've come to actually writing a proof, all right? And I am going to have you write proofs in this class. You do need to be able to write proofs. Now, um, just sort of laying cards on the table here, a quick distinction for most geometry teachers. I am not saying um, that this is the case, but if you're taking this class with me and more than likely your geometry teacher is going to make this distinction. If you're in a geometry class, um, when writing a proof, um, if it's just a geometry class, we'll probably already give you sort of the outline of the proof, and then there'll just be a few blank spaces where you'll fill in the missing information, okay? Um, that's what I'm going to do if, if you're just in a geometry class. I'll, I'll sort of give you the framework, the bones of the proof. There'll be a few missing pieces that you will have to fit in to complete the proof. If you're in a geometry honors class, all right, you will construct the proof from scratch, all right? You will be given some statements, you'll be asked to prove something, and, and that's it. You will have to go from start to finish, construct the entire proof. You won't be given anything, you'll have to do it all yourself. Normally, that's a distinction that most geometry teachers will make, all right? So if you're in geometry, you'll be given the bones, you fill in the missing pieces. If you're in a geometry honors class, um, you will have to construct the proof from scratch on your own, okay? So what is a proof? Remember, what we're doing in geometry is by proving, what we mean is justifying your steps, all right? Why can you do what you're doing, all right? That's what we're doing here, all right? That's what a proof is. Now, the proof we're going to look at is a two-column proof, and I'll talk about that on the next page. Some reasons some justifications that are acceptable. Acceptable justifications are going to be undefined terms. We talked about undefined terms. Undefined terms simply mean they have no formal definition, but we can describe what they are, points, lines, and planes. You can use those as a justification. Of course, definitions, absolutely you can use definitions as a justification, and we will. Postulates. Postulates are statements that don't have to be proven. It's really sort of common sense stuff. It's just, it's known to be true. You don't have to prove it. And then of course, previously proven theorems. Theorems do need to be proven true before you can use them. But once the theorem has been proven, you can use it as justification for proving something else. So these are all acceptable reasons. An unacceptable reason is because I said so, all right? Only God can say because I said so, because he's God. That's not you. Do not ever use the reason, oh, I did that because I said so. That's not for you, all right? You must. Undefined terms, definitions, postulates, previously proven theorems. Those are all okay, all right? Otherwise, um, you, you don't have a justification, all right? So you, when we justify our steps, we are proving something. Now, we're going to do, or we're going to start off, there are a couple of ways of doing um, there are a couple of ways of doing proofs. We're going to take a look at right now a two-column proof. Now later on we'll take a look at a couple other ways of writing proofs, but for now we'll just start with a two-column proof and we'll go from there. So here's the way that a two-column proof works. It's a way of organizing your information, all right? And I've got sort of it set up for you right here. What you're gonna do is you will start with your given statements. What do you know? What have you been told? Okay? And then after what you've been given, we're going to ask you to prove something, all right? And that's what you're being asked to prove, all right? So what you've been given, what you're being asked to prove. Now, the reason it's called a two-column proof is because there are two columns, all right? You're going to write your statements. How do you prove, starting with your givens, how do you go from your givens to proving the statement you've been asked to prove? But Every time you make a statement, you must give a reason for being able to make that statement. You have to justify each step using undefined terms, definitions, postulates, previously proven theorems, things like that, all right? A two-column proof. Let me show you an example of one that is already done. Here's what we've got. We're going to write a two-column proof to show, to show that three times the quantity x minus 5 thirds is equal to 1. I want you to prove, prove to me, 
x is equal to 2. Great. Step 1. What I've been given. Right? I was given this statement. 3 times the quantity x minus 5 thirds is equal to 1. That is the first thing in my proof and the reason it was given. That's what you told me. Great. What am I trying to get to? x is equal to 2. That's what I've asked you to prove. Now, we're going to do the steps to solve for x, but you must justify each step. So, here's what we do. First step, again, this one's already worked out for you. Um, just to show you how it works, uh, first thing you would do is the distributive property. Multiply the 3 through the parentheses, right? The justification is the distributive property. Distribute the 3 through the parentheses. Now, substitution, right? Um, here's the substitution part, right? I'm multiplying the negative 3, the negative 3 times 5 thirds. When I do that, negative 3 times 5 thirds is a minus 5, right? The 3's cancel each other out, just leaving with a minus 5. That's substitution, right? I know that a negative 3 times 5 thirds is the same as just minus 5, right? So I'm just simply doing a substitution. I'm saying, oh, hey, this thing right here, I know that that is equal to 5. So I'll just substitute the 5 into its place. That's why the justifying step is substitution. I'm substituting the 5 for what's in red. All right? Now, keep going. I'm trying to solve for x. Add, right? We add the 5 to both sides. Why? Well, the addition property of equality. Algebra says whatever you add to one side, add to both sides, and that is okay. It's a legal move. Algebraically, you're good. So. Addition property of equality, I'm allowed to do that. That's my justification, my reason for that step. I can do that. Again, though, substitution. Look, 1 plus 5, what is that? Well, 1 plus 5 is 6. There it is. What is negative 5 plus 5? It's 0. So that goes away, right? That's why the justification for the next step is substitution. I'm a 0 goes there, a 6 goes there, I'm just substituting that in. Finally, I'm multiplying by 3. How do I get the x by itself? Well, divide both sides by 3. Why can I do that? Well, the division property of equality from algebra. Algebra says you can divide both sides of an equation by something as long as you divide both sides by the same thing. Right? Well, in this case, I'm dividing both sides by 3. The division property of equality, that's my justification. And I arrive at my um, conclusion. I wanted you to prove that x is equal to 2, and based on these steps, I have done so. So what we're going to do on the next page of the notes is we're going to go ahead and work on a couple of these proofs together, um, writing proofs just to give you some practice. Again, remember a pretty clear distinction most geometry teachers will make is if you're taking geometry, you'll be given sort of the bones, the structure of it, and asked to plug in a few missing pieces. If you're in a geometry honors class, more than likely you will be asked to construct the proof from scratch. Okay? Head on over to the next page of the notes. I'll meet you guys there.